If you know how to call, it knows where to deliver. One more time for those that are slow in the back. If you know how to call, it knows how to deliver. And I don't know who I came to preach to today, but if you learn to call on the name of Jesus, God knows how to deliver from wherever you call. Call him in your trouble. Call him in your pain. Call him in your storm. And where you call him, he'll deliver. Jesus is his name. to give God glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Isn't he good? Praise the Lord. Isn't it good to be here in the sanctuary where you can be free to worship and lift up the name of Jesus? Praise the Lord. If you're grateful, praise the Lord. If you've come in to give God praise, praise the Lord. I've got a question for you. Is God your everything? If he means everything to you, can you wave to Zion so that he may see that you are so grateful? My God, each and every day he wakes us up and gives us another chance. That alone should warrant a thank you. Hallelujah. I have a new one for you today. I want you to repeat after me, say, say everything, everything, you're everything to me, say, say everything, everything, you're everything to me, say life and breath. singing I hear you singing say you're everything everything say joy in sorrow joy in sorrow somebody ought to make this song their own say you're everything everything say hope for tomorrow hope for tomorrow if you could join us as we call a few names of the Lord say master
lift your hands, lift your hands, say, you're everything, say everything, everything, think about what God has done for you today, say, you're everything, say everything, everything, whoa, you're everything to me, you're everything to me, yeah. something about that name Master Savior Jesus like a fragrance
you need healing power and victory said it's all up to you whatever you need him to do just trust him and believe and then by faith you can receive somebody by the hand and say neighbor I don't know about you but I came to lift up the name of Jesus now lift up the name of Jesus has he done anything for you lift up the name of Jesus Food on your table. Lift up the name of Jesus. Clothe you in your right mind. Lift up the name of Jesus. I gotta go. I gotta go. We got one hour. We gotta go. 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 I got 10 seconds for somebody to give God the best praise. You can lift up the night. That'd be all right. I said lift up the night. any visitors here today, listen. This is just what happened when you can feel the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, our scripture reading today comes from Psalm 105 from the New Revised Standard Updated Edition. It reads like this, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name, make known his, his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him. Tell all of his wonderful works, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Verse four says, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Now is our time for prayer, but we don't want to consider it we want to consider that there are people that came to church on Good Sunday morning with some concerns on their hearts. Um, and we want you to lift those concerns, those individuals now at this time. Who are we praying for today, Alpha Street? I 
We're also praying for Melanie Moore and the loss of her brother, Michael Staden. Sherry Bolden and the loss of her mother, Margaret Bolden, and Merrick Kyden, the loss of, his, of her brother, Irvin Kyden, and Gerald and Corey Gladden and the loss of their mother, Queen Gladden. Let's go to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you. That Lord, even sometimes we can feel your presence. We can feel other things as well. Lord, I'm praying for my brother and my sister somewhere on my, on my row. Somewhere in this vicinity or maybe even watching me online. Lord, you know perfectly and intimately their struggle. As they're going and having to navigate the valley of the shadow of death. Lord, we're praying that you would be like you were with David. You would be with them. Lord, I'm praying for that person that's grieving the loss of a loved one today. That maybe they have those moments where they want to call that individual's name. Comfort them. Those moments and those times when um, those feelings and emotions begin to swell up. Allow them to be transformed into moments and emotions of rejoicing. We thank you now for our brother and our sister that is grieving. But now, Lord, we came today to worship as well. And Lord, we know that no matter how much singing goes on, without your spirit, nothing can happen. We know no matter how much preaching goes on, without your spirit, nothing can happen. And Lord, we're praying today for a fresh wind, a fresh blowing of your spirit. Oh, we lift up our pastor today, the Reverend Dr. Howard John Wesley. Lord, we're praying for precision of speech. We're praying for clarity of mind, Lord. We're praying that he would be able to deliver the word in the manner that you've called him to do. Lord, we also pray for him outside of this pulpit. We pray for his mind. We pray for his health. Lord, we even pray that he can have fun sometimes. We thank you now for him. And we thank you for everybody gathered here today. Lord, we thank you in advance for what will come from this worship experience. It is in your darling son Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Now, would you join with us as we prepare to sing our hymn, No Not One, with royal priesthood. Come on out of the street and lift up this hymn of the church. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide Till the day is done, there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. We're going to sing the first and last stanza all together. Here we go. There's not a friend. Our soul's diseases. No, not one. No, not one. Come on, all together. Jesus knows. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend. Last answer. Was there a gift like the Savior? No, not one. No, not one. Will He refuse? Will He refuse us a hope in heaven? No, not one. No, not one. Come on, Jesus knows. The day is done. Come on. There's not a friend. No, not one. Come on, let's sing that chorus one more time. All by yourself. Here we go. Everybody. Jesus knows. He will guide. Till the day is done. There's not a friend. Come on, all together. No, not 
one. No, not one. Hallelujah. And with that same joy and peace, let's go make sure we pass the peace to somebody in the sanctuary here today. Come on, Alpha Street, would you help me? guests who grace us with the presence of God by your presence and worship, to our family and friends who connected all across and around the World Wide Web to join in with worship on us this Sunday morning. Grace and peace be unto you from God who loves us as a mother and a father, and Jesus Christ who always and alone is our resurrected, our risen, our reigning, and our returning Redeemer. I don't know about you, but I am grateful, excited, and happy, glad to be back here at Alpha Street Baptist Church, and I thank you all for your prayers. Thank you for prayers and faithfulness. So I've taken a few Sundays off just to rest a little bit, to travel, to drop a boy off at college, to get some sun, and have a whole lot more food than I should have had, but I'm grateful <laughs> to God to be back in this space, and I don't take it lightly that people have whispered my name in prayer, and for that I am grateful. And I thank you all for being a true ch church family and praying for your pastor. And I'm excited to get back to be with you all in worship as we begin to celebrate this 15th anniversary of pastor and people of what the Lord has done and bring us together. We want to move in this hour of power worship service by pausing to break bread and share in cup. We have an open communion at Alpha Street that we openly celebrate with all who've confessed and believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. When you came in today, you received elements for the Lord's Supper. If you did not, if you just wave a hand, there are deacons who will gladly serve you even now. If you're watching online, we invite and encourage you to take hold of whatever elements you will use to connect with us as together we remember the death, the resurrection, and the imminent return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's funny while dropping my son off at school and doing all the things that's necessary to get a room together, I have learned a few things. Number one, I will never buy another piece of furniture from Ikea. <laughs> um, I refuse to spend hours of my life finding screws with a little Allen wrench to put anything together. Number two, while we were out shopping, Sharice, to get everything he needed, we got back and we realized that we hadn't bought any washing detergent. And he looked at me, he said, Dad, what's the problem? I can just use the machine. <laughs> I 
said, son, something's got to get the stains out. That if you don't have what's necessary to get the stain out, you may say it's washed, but it ain't clean. That there takes something to get the stain out. All of us come into church with some sinful stains. Yours may be a little bit harder to find than someone else's. But we all do. And we all need something to get the stain out. That's why the hymn writer said, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. We take bread and we drink of cup to remind ourselves that it is only the shed blood of Jesus Christ and the surrendering of his body in crucifixion that gets the stains out. A convicted mind, a guilty conscience, a spirit of regret will not cleanse you, but the blood of Jesus can. You need more than what you have in your own hand. You need what God has offered you. That's why we eat of this bread, because it represents the broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is our Christ. He was crucified. He did die. He was buried. He is resurrected. He ascended to the right hand of God the Father, and one day he is coming back to the glory of our Lord. This is the bread of our Lord and Jesus Christ. Let us break and eat together. In the cup is the memorial of the blood shed on the cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins and the redemption of our souls. Nothing can cleanse us other than the blood of Jesus Christ. Let us drink together. Will you pray with me? God of mercy, grace, and love, in our faith we receive what you offer in your grace. The complete and utter forgiveness of our sins, the eternal security of our soul's salvation, the power and the promise of the Holy Spirit to live lives that are free from sin and are pleasing in your sight. And the commandment and commission we have to share your love and make other disciples. You've loved us, God. Teach us to love one another. And as you've forgiven us, may we forgive each other. In the name of Jesus, our Christ, we do pray. Amen. Um, this is our hour of power worship service. This is our last one for the summer. Uh, we thank you all for moving quickly with us. Next Sunday, we go back to our three-hour worship services. We invite you uh, uh, to come on and, and sit a while and stay. Um, but um, I thank you all. You all know that we don't raise an official offering. It's not because the church is in, in need of it or dependent upon it to do the work of ministry and the building of the kingdom, but it's because we believe that as you mature in your walk with God, no one should ever have to beg or force you to do anything that's right. We all know that God has blessed us, and everyone in here knows it's right to give back in return. I'm not gonna stand up here and make you some prophetic promise and beg you and use some tricks to get you to give, because at the end of the day, you ought to be able to pray and ask God's Holy Spirit to move upon your heart about what is appropriate to give. We're not here to debate what a tithe is off the net of the gross. What we're here to do is to learn to listen to the Spirit of God and obey. Amen. So I'm gonna ask you to be obedient to be prayerful, to be generous. There's so many platforms you can use to give. If you're here today, we ask that you do so. If you're watching online, I want you to be more than just a watcher, but a supporter as we continue to make glorious the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Um, I want to thank God for all of you who've been faithful in worship. We get ready now to hear the word of God in song as royal priesthood will come, then the word of God in sermon, and then we'll go out and live the word of God as we show it to the world.
There's a prophet Isaiah who declared that the grass withers and the flower may fade, but the word of our God is true forever. In a world where there's so little you can depend on, how grateful we are to have the gift of God's holy word with all the promises that we stand on. God, I thank you for the power of your word that we still believe that you are able to step in the middle of nothing and whatever you command to be must be. So some of us bring our nothing to this place and just ask you to speak on it. Your word was so powerful that Jesus spoke and a young sick boy was healed. He spoke in the winds and the waves obeyed his voice. He spoke and a dead man came out alive. God, we pray now that you would speak in that same manner. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. In the name of our Jesus and our Christ, we do pray. Amen. Amen. As some of you all are familiar, in this Hour of Power summer series, we've taken time to journey into and through some of the names of God we see in Holy Scripture. This is more than just a Bible study that we may have some erudition about the names of God, but more a recognition that each and every name of God is literally an invitation for you to come and to know God in that way. God opens God's arms with an opportunity for you to know him like you've never known him before. And each name of God is a promise of what God will do and who God will be. We started our journey, as I share with you, the name God gives himself on Mount Sinai in Exodus 3 when Moses asks, what's your name? <laughs> God's response is, I am that I am. I tell you, in a real sense, it is a blank check that God writes and says, walk with me and find out. Mess around and find out who I really am. I want to thank our staff ministers, our interns, our guest preachers who've continued on helping us understand Jehovah M. Kadesh, the God who sanctifies. Amen. Jehovah Nisi, a God who says, if you stand still, I'll fight the battle. Amen. Jehovah Jireh, the God that says, when there ain't no way, I am your provider. Amen. Jehovah Shama, the God that says, you ain't got to look far, I'm right here. El Roy, the God who sees, Emmanuel, the God who is with us, Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. And today, as we come to the end of our hour of power, I also want to bring a momentary end to the series. And Deacon Russell, I'm convinced that there's one name of God we must deal with. The most powerful, the most prolific, the most profound name of God in any series on the names of God would be incomplete without this name right here. You don't have to take my word for it, though I want you to listen to what the Apostle Paul says in his letter to the church in Philippi, Philippians, in the New Testament. And we invite you, as you're physically able, to stand with us, that together we might heed and hear the reading of the Word of God. And I hope you've not forgotten that at the end of the reading, when the preacher says, this is the Word of God for the people of God, you're supposed to say, thanks be to God. Philippians chapter 2 Normally, we read from the New Revised or the New International, but this just sounds better in the New King James. <laughs> Philippians chapter 2, beginning in verse number 5. Here's some words that prayerfully are familiar to you. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking on the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient even to the point of death, death on the cross. Here it is. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name 
which is above. You let me read every name. <laughs> that at the name of Jesus. <laughs> every knee shall bow. Watch this. On things in heaven, on things in the earth, and even things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. God exalted him and gave him a name that is above all names. Do me a favor if you would, just let your neighbor know you're sanctified. Tell him neighbor, oh neighbor, there's something about the name Jesus. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. There's something about the name Jesus. I shared with those at the 8 o'clock worship service that I really enjoy a good movie. As a matter of fact, my favorite pastime is to slip away on a Monday afternoon when all y'all are still at work <laughs> and slide into an empty theater and order me some nachos with extra jalapenos <laughs> and watch a good movie. I love action flicks, good revenge plot, some car chases, little gun battles, some time travel, and some superheroes. I like a good comedy, one that makes you cry laughing while you sit and watch the stupidity on the film. <laughs> I like a good thriller, have you sitting on the edge of your seat wondering how this is going to work out as it messes with your mind. I love good documentaries, especially those that highlight the history, the heritage, the strength, and the intelligence of black people. Um, I like just about all kind of movies. But let me tell you the one genre of movie I don't like and care for. I don't care for horror films. <laughs> now, wait, wait, it's not because I'm scary. <laughs> I don't like horror films because, Drew, I found that most of the plots are stupid. <laughs> it's about some demonically possessed mass murderer and a bunch of folk that ain't got enough good sense to run. <laughs> so growing up, I never really had fear of these horror films. Freddy Krueger didn't scare me. Michael Myers did nothing for me. Jason didn't scare me, keep me up at night. Chucky didn't bother me. <laughs> but I gotta be honest, there's, there's one horror film that the little, hit a little too close to home one that got underneath my skin, one that bothered me a little bit. It came out in 1992. The setting was the Cabrini Green Projects in the middle of Chicago. Uh, it was about a character named Daniel Robitaille. You may not remember that name. You better know him as Candyman. Uh, now, nah, if you haven't seen Candyman, don't. <laughs> You're not missing much. Deacon Ernest Cena, it wasn't his hooked hand that bothered me. It wasn't even the swarm of bees that he could call and summon upon his victims. What I didn't like about Candyman was how he entered your life. Candyman wouldn't bother you unless you stood in front of a mirror and called his name five times. And if you stood in front of a mirror and called his name five times, he would show up and it was over for you. <laughs> now, I knew Candyman wasn't real, but I'm going to tell y'all, for weeks after watching Candyman, Siobhan, every time I walked by a mirror, <laughs> I was tempted <laughs> to call his name. 
The reason I did not was because I was raised good Baptist. <laughs> and although I don't believe in candy, man, I was raised to believe that there's a name, if you call it right, he will show up. And there's a name, if you whisper it with reverence, things are changing in your world. There's a name that even if you stutter, when you get it out of your lips, when you get up off your knees, if you've called this name and called it right, something's going to happen. And that is the name of Jesus. And I came by to preach today something I hope you already know, that there is something about the name of Jesus. Wish I had some preaching folk in here because someone, when you heard the title of today's sermon, you said, Pastor, you ain't got to say nothing else. The sermon is finished right there because you know that something happens when you call on the name Jesus. Look, I'm not giving you no hoodoo, this ain't no myth, this ain't no magic, but I'm telling you that something happens when you speak the name Jesus in your situation. Ah, uh, there's a witness in here, something happens when you get on your knees and you lift up your feeble prayer and you come to the end of your prayer and say, God, now in the name of Jesus, something happens when you lay hands on something and begin to cry out in the name of Jesus that there is power. Matter of fact, you know you're saved and sanctified when something happens when you hear the name Jesus. Listen, listen, I don't know where you are in your walk, but I'm in a place in my life, if I just hear the name Jesus, something gets to moving in my spirit, something gets to rattling in my mind, something gets to fleshing up in me, that, that when I hear the name Jesus, that, that's why that songwriter said, there is a name <laughs> I love to hear. I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest, I thought this was a Baptist church name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. There's something about that name. The, the apostle Paul recognized it. He said, that name ain't no ordinary name. Let me tell you about that name. God exalted that name above every other name. Yeah. Hear me, beloved. There ain't no name you know that can do more for you than the name of Jesus. I'm sorry, I know that's not grammatically correct, but it's theologically on point. There ain't no name you can call that will do more in your life than the name Jesus. It's the name that is above. Notice Paul did not say he gave him a name above all names. He gave him the name. That at the name of Jesus, watch this, everything on earth is going to bow. At the name of Jesus, everything in heaven is going to bow. And in case you don't know about either one of those, and everything below the earth, every demon in hell will bow at the name of Jesus. There's something about that name. Paul says, and everyone will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ, Lord. Jesus Christ, Lord. Listen at the names, if you will. His name is Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. That's no random name. Yeah. Go back to the story of the birth of Jesus. You remember that when God makes a decision that God's going to come through a virgin named Mary, he sends an angel, Gabriel, to Mary to tell her, hey, look, God's got a plan for you. God's about to do something that's going to trip you out. And when you get pregnant and have a child, the angel tells Mary, you have to name him Jesus. Jesus is the name God chose for himself when he came to the earth. And to make certain that name stuck, took, when, when the angel went to Joseph, 
He gave Joseph the same message. Hey, Jay, God's about to do something with Mary. Don't trip. It's the Holy Spirit. And you're going to have a baby boy, but you can't name him what you want to name him. His name ain't JJ. He's not Joseph Jr. You can't name him Lil' J. His, his name has to be Jesus. Because Jesus is the name God chose for himself. Remember when God tells Moses' name, he says, listen, tell him I am. But now he says, and I got another name that I choose for myself. I choose the name Jesus. Why Jesus? Well, let's teach a little bit about what the name Jesus is and find our way to an amen. Jesus is the English translation of the Greek term Asus. Asus. I-E-S-O-U-S. Isus is the Greek translation of the Hebrew term Yeshua. Yeshua in English is Joshua. Don't miss this. Jesus, what we call him, is the English translation of Asus. Asus is the Greek translation of the Hebrew Yeshua, and Yeshua in English is what we call Joshua. The Jews who knew Jesus didn't use the name Jesus, they used the name Yeshua. Because Yeshua eventually becomes Jesus in English. Yeshua, Pastor Wesley, is a combination of the prefix for Jehovah, J-E, and the verb Shua, which means to save. Yeshua, Joshua, literally means God saves. Jesus literally translates God saves. So whenever I say the name Jesus, I'm making a declaration that we serve a God who saves. Come, 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 come here. And God says, that's the name I want y'all to call me. Because that's exactly what I'm coming to do. I'm coming to save you from something you can't save yourself from. Hear me, humanity. Y'all didn't get yourself into something you can't get yourself out of. And I'm tired of watching you die in something you got in. So I'm going to come and I'm going to save you from something you can't get out of. God saves. Every time you mention the name Jesus, you're reminding yourself God saves. That, that, that's why the old saints, whenever they got in trouble, the first thing that came out their mouth, Jesus. When they heard some bad news, Jesus. When someone was dying, Jesus. When a child got locked up, Jesus. When things went from bad to worse, Jesus. Because they recognize we're calling on a God who saves. And if you learn to call the name Jesus in your troubles, in your trials, in your storms, in your pain, in your problems, in your hell, wherever you call the name Jesus, God will save. I'm, I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm looking for a little wit. I need about two folk over here one folk over there, and I'll make number four, who can declare there have been some seasons when all I could do was call on the name of Jesus. And somehow, some way, God delivered me. Uh, uh. Okay, okay. I, I got it, I got it. Some folk, y'all, yeah. You still don't know the power of the name? Um, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. Um, I just dropped Deuce off at college, and I was really surprised at how different college is now than when many of us went to school. It's not the same. 
Marcy, it's not the same. We, we're moving in. It's August. It's Mississippi. Okay, you, you, you miss me. It's, <laughs> it's August. It's Mississippi. Somebody say it's hot. <laughs> we, we're moving in Mississippi in August, carrying boxes to the fourth floor. Some say it's hot. We get in the room, Russell, and college is different. This boy has a thermostat in his room. Now, see, you forget what a thermostat is. It controls the air conditioning. Now, you and I know when we went to school in August, there was no air conditioning. We had that fan that we put in the window and it blew hot air. It ain't the same, it ain't the same. We're in there moving in, there's a knock at the door, I kid you not. There are two ladies outside, they're the cleaning people. They come to tell us that they go into every room and clean the bathrooms every Friday. Then, someone else comes and they're offering laundry service. Yeah, you can bag your clothes up, give it to them, and they'll bring it back. I said, you don't, you don't get laundry service in college. You gotta learn the difference between dirty and funky. You just, you... <laughs> Yo, and they have these things, Siobhan, it blew my mind. They're these little robots that run around campus called Starship Robots. Google it when you get home, when you get home. Starship Robots are a delivery system that on these phones these kids have, they have an app. And Ty, on the app, they can order whatever they want from the campus bookstore, from any of the restaurants on campus, from any of the cafes on campus, and when they place the order, it's put in the robot, and the robot goes to where the kid is. That, that ain't college. You, he, 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 he's sitting in class and orders Starbucks. And when he get out of class, the little robot has delivered it to the stairs where he is so he can get a Starbucks. And I'm saying, how in the world does it know where to deliver to? Here's what he said. He said, Dad, wherever you call it from, it will deliver to where you called it because it's delivering based on the call. That if you know how to call, it knows where to deliver. You missed it. If you know how to call, it knows where to deliver. One more time for those that are slow in the back. If you know how to call, it knows how to deliver. Now I don't know who I came to preach to today, but if you learn to call, on the name of Jesus, God knows how to deliver from wherever you call. Call him in your trouble. Call him in your pain. Call him in your storm. And where you call him, he'll deliver. Jesus is his name. Christ is his title. Listen, you need to know that Jesus Christ is not a formal name. Christ is not the last name of Jesus. Christ is a title. It's almost like when you call me pastor, what pastor is not my formal name, it's my title. Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus is a title. Christ is the Greek term Christos. Christos is the Greek translation of the Hebrew word Messiah. Messiah means anointed one. Christ is the Messiah the anointed one. 
Jesus, God saves, Christ, anointed one. Can I teach Bible since I'm back? You need to know in ancient Israel, there were only three offices that were reserved to be anointed. Prophet, priest, and king. The only offices that were reserved for anointing were prophets, priests, and kings. Let's work through each one. Prophet. Prophet was a person assigned by God to hear from God and bring the word of God to the people of God. Because God understood the people don't always get God right. So God had to pick someone to help the people get God right. So God would choose a prophet. The prophet was anointed. And the prophet could then hear from God and come to the people and say, hey, this is what God told me to tell you. That's the prophet. Then there's the priest. Now, remember, the prophet got it from God and took it to the people. The priest serves the reverse function. The priest got it from the people and gave it back to God. God gave the word through the prophet to the people. The people then made a sacrifice, and the priest gave the sacrifice to God. Don't you miss it. The word of God came through the prophet to the people of God. The people of God would repent. They then offered a sacrifice, and the sacrifice had to be taken by the priest to be given back to God because can't everybody get access to God. So God chose a prophet to speak on his behalf, but then God told a priest to be the delivery boy of the people's offering back unto him. And then there was the king. The king had to be anointed because the king sat on the throne of David. The king was the one that kept law and order with the people. The king was the one who, when he saw the enemy coming, would make certain that we protected the people against the enemy that will come against us. The king was the one who reigned with authority. The king was the representative of God's power on earth. There was the prophet who worked on behalf of God for the people. There was the priest who worked for the people on behalf of God. And then there was the king that kept it all together. Now, Here's the problem in Israel. No one in Israel's history had ever been prophet, priest, and king at the same time. It was too much for a prophet to be a king. It was too much for a king to be a priest. It was too much for a priest to be a prophet. So all of those were separate. And the Messiah was the one prophesied to be all three at the same time. The reason, the reason Israel was waiting on the Messiah, because they ain't never seen nobody who could be prophet and priest and king and prophet and priest and king at the same time. Here comes Jesus. And here's why he's the Christ. Number one, because he's a prophet. The prophet brought the word from God to the people. And Jesus ain't just any prophet, because he didn't just bring the word. I, I feel some Baptists in here. He was the word. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. He is the word. And he's priest. The priest took the sacrifice from the people and gave it back to God. The problem was that no sacrifice from the people could ever truly satisfy God. So Jesus said, I won't just bring a sacrifice. I will become a sacrifice. And I will die on the cross for the payment of your sins. Uh -huh. And he's king. The problem with Israel's kings is that they only reigned for a little bit. David reigned and then he didn't. Solomon reigned and then he didn't. Jeroboam reigned and then he didn't. Rehoboam reigned and then he didn't. Hezekiah reigned and then he didn't. Ahab reigned and then he didn't. All of them had an end. But when Jesus rose from the dead, he said, all power is given to me in heaven and on earth. And that's why we sing, he reigns forever. He reigns forever. He reigns 
forever. He's prophet and priest and king at the same time. So he's Christ, the Messiah. He's God saves. Jesus is his name. <laughs> Christ is his title. Lord is his position over my life. Um, Jesus is what God did. Christ is who he is. Lord is how I relate to him. Oh, it's going to get quiet because uh, the word Lord is the Greek word kyrios. Someone say kyrios. You know what kyrios means? Kyrios means I'm the one who owns it. Kyrios means it's my property. Kyrios is I make the decisions and it does what I tell it to do. And here's what Paul argues, that, that he cannot be Jesus and not be my Lord. That when God saves me, God owns me. Ooh, I know you don't like this with your liberated self. Um, that he cannot be the Messiah and not be the ruler of my life. That I literally submit and surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and I no longer live my life for myself, but I live my life to please the one who died for me, to please the one who shed his blood for me, to please the one who took ownership of my life, that God owns me. Now let me tell you what, why, why we don't shout because you don't recognize that in that day, the Lord of something chose what he wanted to own. Uh, uh, the, uh, the land didn't pick the owner. The owner picked the land. So to be owned by someone meant that that someone chose you. Here's, here's where the shout ought to start brewing in your spirit. Because that means that God chose me. That when I say he's my Lord, I'm just letting you know he chose me. Let me tell you, let me tell you why, why, why she quiet and why he ain't say nothing. Because cause you are deluded by your resume. You've been hoodwinked by your salary. You've been bamboozled by that Mercedes. You've been run amok by your ego, and you think you were worthy of being chosen. But if the truth be told about each and every one of us, there ain't nothing about us that made God choose us. Can I make you shout? And the reason you ought to be happy is because too many other folk rejected you based on what they thought they knew, and God chose you with everything he did know. Hey, he chose me. Uh. I, I, I gotta go. Y'all, I'm on vacation. I'm on vacation, and I take a cooking class. Because uh, I love to cook, and, and part of the class was an experience with the chef. And the chef takes us out to a farmer's market. Uh, because the restaurant is farm to table. And everything they buy, they buy fresh from the farm on the day they're going to cook it. Uh, so we are out at the farmer's market, and I'm noticing the chef picking up the ingredients for the recipe. And he's picking up vegetables and he's squeezing them and smelling them and turning them around. And then he put it down. And he pick up another one and squeeze it and smell it and turn it around and put it down. And he went over to another one and picked it up and squeezed it and smelled it and turned it around and put it down. I said, what are you doing? He said, well, I got to check them because some of them don't feel right. Some of them don't smell right. 
Some of them ain't firm enough. Some of them have too many spots on them. And if I don't like what I feel, and if I don't like what I see, and if I don't like what I smell, I'm gonna put it back down. And I start to get happy in my soul. Because back on October 29th, 1989, God picked me up. He saw my blemish. He smelled my sin. He knew I was unworthy. And he chose me anyhow. Is there anybody here who knows God chose you when God should have rejected you? should have put you back but thanks be to God he chose me I'm sorry I know that I get on your nerves every now and then but the reason I shout on Sundays is because every now and then I get a flashback of what God dealt with of what God overlooked, of what God forgave. And when I think of what he's done and how he held me, my soul, my soul, my soul, hang on. Sit down. Somebody say he chose me. I've got to go. I got to go. When the owner chose something, that something then began to bear the owner's name. So all the world knew the owner had control. God owns us. And the name we wear is Christian. Christian, Christian. Do you know what that word literally means? Christian, I know you think it means follower of Christ, and that's good, but that's not a literal definition. Christian male is a combination of Christos, which you just learned, is anointed one. And the Greek suffix shun, T-I-A-N, and shun means little one. Christian, anointed little one. You, you almost, uh. when I say I am Christian, I'm saying I'm a little <laughs> anointed one. Oh, oh. Can I tell you why I survived the storms I've survived? Because I'm a little anointed one. You want to know why folk can talk about you and you still rise to the top? Because you're a little anointed one. You want to know why you walked out of that hell that almost destroyed you? Because you're a little anointed one. I'm a little anointed one. Which means that every time you see me, you ought to see some Jesus in me. Because I'm a little anointed one. That's why I got to watch how I talk to you. Because I'm a little anointed one. That's really why I didn't cuss you. Because I'm a little anointed one. Let's go. Can, can I tell you all what one of the greatest joys in my life is? Really, one of the greatest joys in my life are to be with my two sons and to be out and about with them. And Sharice, someone come up to me and say, that boy looks just like you. I, I love it when they see Deuce. Deuce. Deuce favors me. He's got freckles right where I do. 
He's my complexion. He's tall like me. I, I love it when people look at him and say, you're a little him. I love when people meet Cooper. Cooper, Cooper's got my personality. He never had a thought he don't share. He doesn't think he's ever wrong. You know he... <laughs> and people look at my sons and go, man, they're just like you. They're just like you. The more time you spend with your owner, the more you ought to be just like them. You are one that confesses Jesus, God saved, is Christ, my prophet, priest, and king, and he's my Lord, the owner of my life. And I'll look a little bit like him every day. And God, that is my prayer this morning for my sisters and my brothers, that we wouldn't come to church and just shout, that we come to church and leave a little more like you. That's what the world needs most, some little anointed ones who pray rather than curse, who love rather than hate, who forgive rather than judge. God, I pray today that you'd make us more like Christ. Jesus Christ is Lord. In his name we pray. Amen. Well, if we get ready to leave this place, I'm going to ask you two things. One, are you certain you're right with God? Is your heart at peace with where you are in life? Do you believe every day you're walking closer and closer to the will of God? Here's the reality. You don't need a preacher to convict you. You know in your heart when you're straying from the Lord. And our God is so loving that you don't have to stay like that. You don't have to feel like that anymore. There's something that happens when you open your heart to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and invite God into your life. And once you do that, yes, you need a church. Don't, don't let anyone fool you. Don't let someone tell you that all churches are bad. Listen, if you go to a restaurant and you don't like the food, you don't stop eating, you just go eat somewhere else. If you didn't like what you had there, that doesn't mean God doesn't have something for you here. So today I'm gonna invite you to do two things. To invite Christ into your heart. If you're here today or watching online, you can do it even now. When you leave today, there'll be some deacons at this altar and in the back. They've got on name tags. Tap her on the shoulder. Tap him on the shoulder. Let them know you want to know more about Jesus. If you're watching online, or if you want to do when you get home, go out to our website. There's a form you'll fill out. We'll get back to you today. Because you don't want tomorrow to come without you being saved. I'm going to invite you also to remember to be prayerful and obedient. Be generous in your giving. God's been good to you. We ask that you obey God and give back unto the Lord. We're going to leave on the voices of royal priesthood, and then we leave to live the word of God.
beloved, now to the Almighty, the All-Wise, the Eternal, the Sovereign, the faithful and omnipotent God who alone is creator of heaven and earth, to the God who's made himself perfectly known to us, and Jesus who always and alone is our Christ, our loving Lord, our sacrificial Savior, our resurrected, risen, reigning, returning Redeemer, to the God who chooses to dwell in these earthen vessels of clay, through the sustaining power, promise, presence, purpose, and person of the Holy Spirit. To that all wise God be both glory and majesty, dominion and power, from now until eternity. And the redeemed of the Lord who loved the Lord and awaited his return, said amen.